Here's something a friend picked up at a flea market and gave to me today. This is a little 12 inch RCA black and white TV manufactured March 1977. You can see it's in a wood grain plastic case with silver trim. Here's your VHF, UHF, power knob, uh, volume knob, brightness and contrast. This is a solid state set, which means it uses no tubes. Now there's one thing interesting about this little TV. I'm sure most of you remember the Radio Shack TRS-80 line of computers that was introduced in the late 70s. Well, the very first uh, version of those computers used this exact same television as a monitor. The only difference, the Radio Shack TRS-80 monitor that came with those computers didn't have the tuners built in. There was a blank cover plate over where the tuner would normally be found. It just said Radio Shack TRS-80 monitor. And there was no speaker built inside the set. And where the volume knob is on this set, on the monitor, that's where the video cable ran out to, to connect to the computer. So now all I need to do is find the TRS-80 black and white monitor version of this TV to have the monitor version and the standard TV version. Now I have no idea what this set does. So let's plug it up, turn it on, and see if it does anything. Yeah, I heard something. Now yeah, getting some static from the speaker. Brightness and contrast turned all the way up. I'm seeing a little bit of action on the screen. Looks like the CRT is very dim. So let's pull the back and check it. Not really too worried about it because I think I have a spare picture to you for one of these sets. And it looks a lot brighter on camera than it does in person. And here's the back of the TV. It's a model AB123W, manufactured March 1977. And here's the chassis. It's a chassis number KCS203D. Uh, it's mostly on a single board, but it does have a plug-in IF module. And here are the tuners. And the flyback, it looks kind of primitive. It looks like something you would see in a tube set. Okay, so let's connect the CRT tester and see what kind of shape this tube's in. Well, I know it's not going to be good, but see if we can rejuvenate it. Okay, we now have the CRT tester connected and all connections and tester calibration set up. See what the emission reads. Uh, not very good at all. So we'll now try to rejuvenate this. First we'll actually do it on the clean and balance setting which is a lower form of rejuvenation that's less harmful to the CRT. We'll push the button down, hold it down until the meter pointer falls back down. Let's see what our emission reads this time. I we'll think we've uh, got a short now. Set our cut off. There we go. Now let's see what our emission emission reads. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if that's any brighter. Turn the light off. 
Oh yeah, that's much brighter. That looks like a TV supposed to look. So let's get our digital converter box and see if we can get a picture. Many around the world. Okay, here we are. We have a picture now, but it's still too dark. The brightness is not adequate. When you have joint pain and stiffness, so I'll have to look into that. I remember a while back in a similar RCA that I had this problem with. I had to change the value of a resistor in the video output circuit in order to get the brightness up to what it should be. Lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, to PSA. Okay, let's see if this brings back some memories from days gone by. Have a look. Yeah, I thought that would bring back some memories. Okay, back on the RCA 12-inch black and white television that we rejuvenated the tube in. And the picture is still dark, and I believe the tube is actually the cause of it. I've tested all of the voltages at the CRT socket, and they all seem to be within what I think they should be. And I'm now testing the picture tube. And as you can see, when we read a mission, it pegs the pegs the meter, which I really don't think it should do. And when I first tested this a second time, it had a G1 to cathode short. Okay, I just tried a little trick that might have made things better. I set the CRT checker to clean and balance for about two seconds to let the filament get good and hot. And then I immediately rotated the knob back to remove shorts and hit the button. And I saw a flash in the neck. And our cutoff is back down to a more reasonable level on the cutoff adjust knob. And we're not pegging the meter on our emission reading anymore. So let's test the TV and see what kind of picture we have now. You know, worst case scenario, I, I'm supposed to have another CRT, so if this one drops to nothing, then I've got another tube I can drop in here. Okay, we now have a watchable picture at this point. Our brightness is still at maximum, but it's better than it was to begin with. Contrast is about, oh, about three quarters of the way up. We sucked it up, let them keep the tax return, and continue to live in their place. We did. We sucked it up. Now I need to adjust the vertical size control. You can see we're not quite filling out the picture, or filling out the screen, rather. So this is the same sister. Okay, we're now adjusting the vertical size control. They're fruity delicious. Just two gummies have four grams of There you go. That's pretty good. Okay, back on the little 12-inch RCA. I checked all of the CRT socket voltages against the schematic, and they seem to be pretty close. And I've just rechecked the uh, CRT, and it's fallen back down considerably from what it was earlier. So I'm going to say this tube is shot. Here is the other CRT that I salvaged out of another set, and I just tested it and it, it checks strong at two volts lower on the filament than what it's supposed to be. So I think we are going to do a little tube swap here and see if the condition improves any. Okay, we now have the chassis removed. We have the old tube down there on the floor and we have the new tube installed except for mounting this mounting band in place which you just simply stick it over the tube and affix it to the 
four corner brackets and then tighten this bolt down until the tube is secure. Okay, the tube is now installed and we're ready to uh, reinsert the chassis. Okay, this is a great improvement. It's much brighter now. Still not as bright as probably what it was and it was new, but I don't have to have the brightness control maxed out. Now the next thing we need to do is position the yoke. As you see the picture is a little crooked there. And the way we'll do that is loosen the clamp screw on the deflection yoke and rotate the yoke until the picture is straight. Okay, that looks real nice now. I also adjusted the centering rings on the yoke to... Because there was a little bit of black here on the side, so I adjusted the centering rings to straighten that little problem out. So as far as I'm concerned, this TV is ready to be put back together. Okay, I've adjusted the vertical size and the deflection yoke positioning, and looks pretty good now. I think we're ready to put the back back on it and enjoy this television. I notice the dot doesn't linger as long on this good tube. That, in some cases, the lingering dot is a sign that the CRT is going tired on you. And here we are, cleaned up, put back together, and ready to use. And the moral of this little repair story is, just because a CRT test somewhat good on the CRT tester, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work that great in the TV. Now, I suppose I could keep this old tube for use in another set that might be more tolerant towards a CRT that's a little weak, but it's already been determined that this tube is dying rapidly. Judging by the meter reading I got this morning when I tested it versus the meter reading I got a little while ago. So there's one more thing I want to show you before we wrap this up. Okay, when disposing of an, old, of an old picture tube, you want to release the vacuum to uh, prevent the possibility of the tube imploding and possibly injuring someone. And the best way to do that is just take a pair of wire cutters and cut off the exhaust, break the exhaust tip like this. And there you go, that tube is now safe and won't hurt anyone, unless of course they break it and cut themselves. Okay, there you go, my 1977 RCA black and white TV. Thanks for watching and more to come later.